Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In our series, we take a game, we show you how it's played, and then in the following episodes, we play the game. And where possible, we put a seat at the table just for you, so you can play along with us and help us make some of the gameplay decisions between the episodes. By doing this, we believe that you'll be able to decide for yourself whether or not a game would be a good fit for you, your family, or your gaming group. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to play the two to four player game designed by Antoine Bauza and published by Asmodee, Takinoko. In the game, the Japanese emperor has instructed you to care for this giant panda, who was a gift from the Chinese emperor. You're going to have to manage plots of land, grow bamboo, and ensure this big guy gets fed. Sometimes he's going to take care of that himself and munch on your hard work. The player who manages these responsibilities best will win the Emperor's favor and the game. Now this game comes in two different versions. The first was originally published in 2011 and is shown here. Then in 2013 they released the Collector's Edition. It has the same gameplay but larger components and comes in a beautiful wood box. I'm going to be teaching you how to play using the Collector's Edition. But if you have the original or are thinking of purchasing it, you can expect the same gameplay inside that box. So when we come back, please join me at the table and we'll learn how to play Takinoko. To begin, we need to set up the play area, and let's assume that we're going to have two players. The game comes with several plot tiles of varying color, but in particular, there is this one pawn tile. This should be placed in the center of the table. The remaining plot tiles should then be shuffled and placed face down on the table within easy reach of all the players. These pieces are irrigation channels, and you'll want to keep them close by as well for use during the game. You'll also want the bamboo pieces nearby, but there are a lot of them, so I'm going to keep some on the back table for now. The improvement tiles come in three varieties, so sort them by type, and also put out the very large wooden weather die. The game comes with several cards. One of them, the Emperor card, should be placed outside the playing area. The remaining cards are objectives that come in three different types, and these can be easily identified by their card backs. So sort and shuffle them separately into their own face-down piles. Next, each player collects an individual player board. These are identical, except for the symbols shown here on the backs of the boards. So then, each player collects the two action chips that match that symbol. The player boards fold, but that's for storage purposes in this edition. During actual gameplay, you're going to leave them open. Now each player collects one of each kind of objective card. Ensure that you keep these hidden from your opponent, but you can always look at your own objective cards. And finally, the panda and gardener figurine are placed on the pawn tile. And that's the setup. Now over the course of the game, players will be trying to complete the tasks as outlined on their objective cards. This could include creating certain arrangements of plots, growing certain colors and heights of bamboo, and feeding the panda the bamboo it craves the most. For completing an objective, you will be awarded the points shown here in the bottom corner of each card. As you successfully complete objectives, you'll place them face up in front of you. Once a single player has completed a certain number of objectives based on the number of players, the game is going to end and the player with the most points on their completed objective cards is declared the winner. But how do we do all of this? Well, the game tells us that the tallest player goes first, and I'm the tallest player at this table, so I'll be going first. And your turn is made up of two steps. The first step is to determine the weather, and this is done by rolling the weather die but each player will skip that step for each of their first turns. So we'll come back to that in just a little bit. Instead, let's move on to the second step, perform actions and complete objectives. 
On your turn, you will get to take two of the five different available actions represented by these symbols on your player board. After choosing the first one, place an action marker on it and resolve the action. Then choose the second action you wish to place, putting a marker on it as well and resolving it. Keep in mind though, you must choose two different actions. You can't take the same action twice within a single turn. But let's look at each available action and learn what they do. And let's start by taking a look at the plots action. After choosing this action, draw the top three plots from the top of the pile. Keep them secret, but pick one to keep. The remaining two, in any order you choose, are then returned to the bottom of the pile. The tile that you decided to keep now gets put into play. Plots can always be placed directly adjacent to the pawn tile. So a future plot could be placed like this, another like this, and even over here, because again, it's touching the pawn tile. You can also place plots that don't directly touch the pawn tile but they must touch at least two other plots already in play. So by placing this tile here, I'm touching these two plots, so it's allowed. But I could not place it here, because then it would only be touching one. Also, the colors don't matter. Any color can be placed adjacent to any other color. The great thing about plots is that bamboo can grow on them if they're irrigated. That is, if they're receiving water. Any plot placed next to the pond tile is automatically irrigated, and when a tile becomes irrigated for the first time, it automatically grows a section of bamboo in its matching color. So when I first placed this tile, I would have placed a green piece of bamboo on it. Likewise, when each of these tiles were placed next to the pond tile, they too would have been irrigated and grown a section of bamboo. Plots that are not placed adjacent to the pond tile are not considered irrigated, so they will not grow bamboo automatically when placed. This tile, for example, will remain empty for now. There is one exception. Some plots have an improvement symbol marked permanently on them, like this one. This improvement is called a watershed, and that means the plot itself already has the water needed to sustain bamboo growth. So no matter where it is placed, it will automatically receive a section of bamboo in its color. The next action is the irrigation channel. When this is chosen, you collect an irrigation channel piece from the reserve. You may immediately put it in play, or if you want, store it here on your player board for use later. At any point during your turns, you may place any number of irrigation channels into play that you had previously stored, and doing this, doesn't use up one of your actions. As I said though, instead of storing the channel, you can choose to immediately put it into play. And to do this, a channel must be placed between two plots along their borders with one end touching the pawn tile. So in future, another channel could be started over here because it is also touching the pawn tile. A channel could not be started here because there's not a plot tile on either side. You also can't run a channel along the edge of a pawn tile like so. Any player may extend a channel on a future turn like this as long as they stay connected to the original source, which is always a pawn tile. Remember this watershed tile we saw earlier? These can never begin a new irrigation system. They only have enough water to spare for their own plot. All irrigation systems must branch out from the pond tile. When a plot has an irrigation channel placed along one of its sides, it becomes irrigated if it wasn't already. And remember what we said, when a plot is irrigated for the very first time, it always grows a single bamboo section in its color. But this free spurt of growth only happens the first time it's irrigated. So when this channel section was placed, it touched two plots that were already irrigated, so they're not gonna get any additional growth. But this channel, when placed, is touching a plot that was not previously irrigated, so it will now grow a section of bamboo. And here you can see another improvement symbol. Let's take a look at that right now. This symbol represents fertilizer, and that means that bamboo on this plot will grow much faster. And anytime there's growth here, like when it's irrigated for the first time, 
you'll place two bamboo sections instead of the usual one. Next, we have the gardener action. This moves the gardener in a straight line any number of plots in the direction of your choice. He just can't stay in the plot that he started in. I'm going to add another plot to our garden right now just to show you some different examples. The gardener could move to this plot or to here, even over to here, or all the way to this end of the garden. If he'd wanted to though, he could have stopped along the way in this plot here. You will notice though, as I'm traveling with him, I'm directly crossing over the borders between plots. In other words, if I had started here, I would not be able to move the gardener to this location because instead of crossing over the borders, he'd actually be traveling right along it. But let's assume for a moment our gardener had stopped in this plot. He's now going to get to work and help things grow. If the tile he stopped on is irrigated, it's going to grow a section of bamboo. And then every adjacent tile of the same color that's irrigated will also grow a section of bamboo. So we'll add another piece here. And then because this plot is fertilized, it will add two sections of bamboo. And although this plot is adjacent and it's irrigated, it won't grow any bamboo because it's a different color. I should also mention the maximum height for a stock of bamboo is four pieces like we see here. So if on a future turn the gardener moved to this plot, nothing more would be added to this bamboo, but these two plots would get their additional pieces. If you move the gardener to a location that is not irrigated, no bamboo will grow there, but it will still grow in irrigated adjacent locations of the same color. I'll bet you can guess what gets moved with this action. That's right, the panda. Following the same rules as moving the gardener, the player taking this action will move the panda in a straight line as far as they want in any direction they choose. But when the panda stops moving, if there is any bamboo in that plot, he'll munch on the top section of it. You then collect that piece and put it on your player board. And there's a space right here for you to put all the bamboo that the panda eats on your turn. Now sometimes when I collect one of the bigger base sections of the bamboo, I'll instead return it to the reserve and replace it with one of the thinner stem pieces instead. It just gives me a little bit more room on my player board. Now if the panda travels to a location that has no bamboo, he won't eat. Also, you can cross over the pond tile and even stop on the pond tile with either the panda or the gardener. Also, you can have the gardener and panda end up in the same location on any tile. And finally, we have the objectives action. Very simply, the player picks one of the three different objective types and then draws the top card from that pile and adds it to their hand. Now you can never have more than five objectives at a time. So if I had five cards, I would not be allowed to take this action. Instead, I might want to consider completing some of these objectives so that I can remove them from my hand, allowing me to draw more. So let's talk about that for a moment. During your turn, at any point, you can complete an objective. In fact, you can complete multiple objectives if you want. You simply place them face up in front of you, and that doesn't cost an action. So let's take a look at the three different objective types and how you complete them. First, there are plot objectives. If the exact arrangement of plots as shown on the card can be found in the garden, the objective is complete. Each plot in the arrangement must be irrigated though, and this symbol here reminds you of that. Looking in our bamboo garden, we can see that this objective card is complete, and that means at the end of the game, I'll be able to collect two points. Now, if you're having trouble seeing this arrangement, you are allowed to rotate the objective cards to more easily match things up. And as you can see, the three green plot tiles shown here are in the exact same arrangement and color right here in the garden. Gardener objectives involve the growth of bamboo in the garden. Some will show that there needs to be four bamboo sections of a color on a tile with a specific improvement symbol. Others will show a height of bamboo in a color, but require that there be no improvement symbols there. And others will require a specific height of several different bamboo stalks, but they can be located anywhere in the garden as long as they match the exact height and color. So that means if there were two pink bamboo stalks, one of them was four and one of them was three, this objective could not be completed. 
Whereas this objective card is complete because it shows a green bamboo stalk with four different pieces sitting on a plot tile with the fertilizer improvement symbol, just like this one here. Finally, panda objectives represent the bamboo you have collected on your individual player board when the panda ate. If you have the required bamboo sections on your board, you may return those pieces to the reserve, retaining any unused ones, and then claim the objective. In this case, I'd be getting an additional four points at the end of the game. Even if conditions change during gameplay, any objective cards that you've completed and claimed cannot be affected. In other words, if I had claimed an objective card using this stock of bamboo and the pesky panda came along later and ate the top piece off of it, it doesn't matter, I've already claimed the objective card, so I can't lose those points. Also, you may have several completed objective cards in your hand. That doesn't mean you have to play them. You can hang on to them and then surprise your opponents by completing several all at once within a single turn. Now we've talked about performing the actions and completing objectives, but that's the second step of your turn. Remember that first step, determining the weather, we skipped over, and that's because each player on their first turn skips the determine weather step. But let's assume for a moment it's the first player's second turn. Now they're going to actually be performing this step, and that involves taking the weather die and then rolling it. There are six different weather conditions on here. The player can choose to activate the condition that was rolled or ignore it. It's up to them. But right now, let's take a look at each of the six different conditions and see what they do. Right here on your player board, you're going to see each of the six symbols found on the die, along with another symbol at the bottom to remind you what each effect does. This symbol represents the sun shining on your bamboo garden, giving that player an additional action this turn but it must be a different action from the previous two chosen for that turn. So I might claim the plot action and then claim an objective card and then tell my opponents for the last action I'm going to claim the irrigation channel. The rain helps the bamboo to grow in the garden. This allows the player to place one new section of bamboo on a single plot following all of the usual rules. For example, the plot must be irrigated and you can't grow the bamboo higher than four sections tall. Wind blows through the garden, giving the player the chance to claim the same action twice this turn instead of having to pick two different actions. Storms frighten the panda with their bright lights and loud noises. This allows the player to move the panda to any plot located in the bamboo garden. And if there happens to be bamboo there, the panda will calm itself by eating one section of it, which the player collects. If you use this weather effect, you must move the panda. You can't just leave it where it is and eat the bamboo there. When clouds cover the sky, it's a good time to add an improvement to the garden. This allows the player to claim any one of the improvement tokens and add it to the garden. Or if you'd prefer, just like with the irrigation channels, you can claim it and then store it on your player board for use later. And just like the irrigation channels, you can play as many of them as you want that you have stored during your turn and it doesn't cost an action. When placing improvements, you can only have one improvement per plot and some plots come with an improvement already permanently marked on them, like this one here. So we could not add one of these tokens to this location. You also can't add an improvement to a plot that already has bamboo growing on it. But, let's say in this situation where we have one piece of bamboo, if the panda was to move over there and gobble it up, that would mean the plot is now empty. So, now an improvement tile could be placed there on a future turn, like this watershed improvement. As a quick reminder, the effect of this token is that it automatically irrigates that plot. And if this is the first time that plot has been irrigated, then a section of bamboo will automatically grow. This was the fertilizer improvement. We saw that earlier, and when it's placed on a location, if that location ever experiences growth, you'll add two sections of bamboo instead of the usual one. This enclosure token means that the plot will keep the pesky panda from eating any bamboo that grows there. So if later in the game a nice healthy stock was growing and the panda managed to travel to that location, he can go there, 
but he won't be able to eat any of the tasty treats. Let me show you another little trick. Let's say I had previously collected the fertilizer improvement tile and that was sitting on my player board. And then after completing a plot action, I chose this plot to place here. Now because you can play improvements from your storage at any time during your turn, before the bamboo grows here, which it would normally do because it's directly adjacent to the pond tile, which means it's automatically irrigated, I can scoop this fertilizer tile on there meaning that this will now grow two pieces of bamboo instead of the usual one. If you roll the clouds and there's no improvement tiles left to take, then the player can choose any of the other weather effects instead. This brings us to the last side of the weather die, the question mark, which when rolled allows the player to choose any weather condition they like. And so the game continues with players taking turns, and on their turn they roll the weather die and then perform their actions and complete objectives. The game will end once a single player has completed a certain number of objectives based on the number of players. In a four-player game, when a single player completes their seventh objective, the final round is triggered. For three players, it will require a player to claim their eighth objective. And then finally, in a two-player game, nine objectives must be claimed by one player. The player who reached this objective total may continue claiming additional objectives during their turn if they have more to claim, but then they will take the Emperor card, which will grant them an additional two bonus points for finishing first. Then each other player will get one more full turn in an attempt to complete some more objectives. Then players will total up all of the points on their completed objective cards, and the player with the most wins both the game and the Emperor's approval. If there is a tie, like in this case here, with both players having a total of 26 points, then the player with the most points on their Panda objective cards is the winner, so this player would win. If there had still been a tie, the players would enjoy a shared victory. Now one thing I didn't mention yet is the optional advanced players rule. What this states is that if you draw an objective card and what you see on the card is already complete in the bamboo garden, then you return that card to the bottom of the objective deck and draw a new card from any one of the other objective cards. Again, this is an optional advanced players rule. You can use it or you can choose not to, but let me give you an example of it. Let's say for a moment I had drawn this card here. I would look in the bamboo garden and I would see that these three tiles already exist right here and all three of them are irrigated, so this objective is already complete at the moment that I drew this card. So I would return it and draw a new one from the same or a different pile. And now just some final points. There are slightly more green plots than there are yellow, and slightly more yellow than there are pink. Also, if you happen to run out of a particular color of bamboo, which is probably not going to happen, but if it does, then you can always use one of the other colors to fill in if necessary. And when you're using that plot action, over the course of the game, this pile is going to get smaller and smaller. Once you get to just two remaining, then when you take the plot action, instead of drawing three, of course, you can only draw the two that are here. You pick one, you put the other one back. Then the next person who uses the plot action will just have to take the final plot. Now, no one can use the plot action from that point forward. Well, that is everything you need to know in order to play Takinoko. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them as soon as I get a chance. And I hope you'll return because we are now going to start some more videos where we actually play through the entire game. You'll be able to see how it really works, get a sense of what it feels like to be playing it, and between each gameplay episode, we're going to give you an opportunity, along with your fellow viewers, to vote on what gameplay decision needs to be made next, so you'll be able to participate as well. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.